Hi developers, it's Hossam Dillahi, Microsoft MVP. In this Lightboard session, I share with you what I believe that every software engineer needs to learn in order to be prepared to work on real-world projects. So hopefully you have already learned one of the most known programming languages like Java, uh, C Sharp, Python, or any other uh, language. And now you are asking yourself what is next. And here we have multiple options. So the best here is to uh, start with what we call the front-end development. Those will use the web technologies like Angular, React, or uh, Vue.js, for example. Maybe tomorrow we'll have other technologies. So this should be uh, the first step in order to learn how to uh, write uh, software and how to write uh, applications. So let's say here, uh, first thing to do is to uh, choose uh, a programming language for the web. So let's say here, this should be called uh, web, web apps. So we need to learn how to write web apps or we, we call also uh, front end. I put this one uh, first because it's uh, a bit uh, easier to, to learn and um, luckily, maybe you have already learned uh, JavaScript and you in the university, so you are uh, prepared and you have all the you need in order to learn one of the most known um, front-end um, web UI um, frameworks, like here, for example, Angular or React the framework created by Facebook, Angular was created by, um, by Google, or Vue.js, which is an open source uh, community. So those are the most known three uh, frameworks for the web, but maybe tomorrow we'll have other uh, frameworks than those. So I believe every software engineer needs to um, at least have some sort of idea about how those uh, works. So JavaScript is really important here. Another important uh, tool to learn is the web services. This is actually the fundamental of software development. Today, because we have the client server uh, applications, the server is actually web services. So let's, here I'll write, this one, so we need to learn how to uh, develop web services. And when we see, when we say back uh, web services here, I mean the uh, backend. So for web services here, we can uh, use uh, any um, OOP programming languages like Java, for example, with the um, frameworks that it go with, like uh, Spring Boot. We can also use .NET with ASP.NET uh, Core, for example. So here I say ASP.NET. Uh, this one uses the uh, C-sharp language. We can also use uh, Python with uh, Python Flask or any other uh, framework to build uh, backend or to build uh, web services. Those could be exposed through uh, REST API. So this is the most uh, useful or the most used one. This one will use uh, HTTP and uh, uh, JSON. So it's really so important to learn how to develop web services because they are almost anywhere. They are they will uh, they will exist in any software um, that we build today. So that's the requirement number two. Another requirement here is to build databases. We need to know how to deal with databases because at the end, the uh, backend or the web services, they will connect to a database where the data will be uh, persisted. So it's important here to emphasize that we need to, uh, to know how to use the database. So let's add that here. And when we say database here, we mean uh, SQL databases or also the NoSQL databases. For SQL databases here, we can mention uh, Oracle, for example, 
or MySQL, SQL Server, and there is many other um, SQL uh, database uh, engines. Oracle is well known for the Java community. MySQL is well known also for the Java and um, uh, PHP community. Uh, SQL Server is um, mostly used with um, uh, .NET applications. And now for uh, NoSQL um, databases, we, ma we can mention here MongoDB, which is almost the most uh, useful one. So uh, MongoDB, maybe also Redis, if we are using uh, a cache layer. And those technologies, um, each, each of those actually have its own API. So we can uh, write SQL scripts against the Oracle or SQL Server, but we can also use what we call the ORM in order to make uh, manipulating the database easier. So instead of writing the SQL scripts, we'll be using uh, an object-oriented language in order to um, query the database. So for that here, I'll add that we can use ORM technology, like for example, Entity uh, Framework, if we are using um, .NET applications or Ibernate with uh, Java applications, or Doctrine, if we use PHP-based uh, uh, apps, and we have a large list of those uh, ORMs. So we mentioned here web apps as the uh, front-end technology, but on the front-end technologies, actually we have another interesting option, which is mobile apps. So let me add here mobile uh, apps. Because those back-end, they might be um, queried through the web apps or also the mobile apps. And here I mean Android and iOS, iPhone and Android uh, devices. With those uh, mobile apps technologies, we can use either uh, Kotlin for Android, or also we can still use Java, but now the, um, the trend is going to use um, Kotlin because now uh, Google um, uh, supports it more than it supports Java. For uh, iOS, the preferred language is uh, Swift. Before Swift, we used uh, Objective-C for uh, iOS, but now the new trend is going to embrace uh, Swift. So those, if we are um, developing native Android and iOS applications, we can also use some cross-platform technologies like Xamarin, for example. So I'll go to mention that here. With uh, Xamarin and Xamarin Forms, we can write um, Android and iOS applications using C Sharp. This is an interesting option for .NET developers who work on the um, uh, .NET web services on the backend, and they want to develop a mobile app for their backend, and they don't want to uh, invest more lots of time learning a new language and a new uh, framework. So they can reuse the uh, C Sharp, their skills in C Sharp, in order to create um, two mobile apps for Android and iOS. And like Xamarin, we have some other um, um, mobile frameworks, like Flutter, for example. This one is uh, created by Google, and um, uh, it uses the Dart programming language in order to create native applications for Android and uh, iOS. We have also some others like Ionic, which is a hybrid uh, mobile uh, framework that uses uh, JavaScript and HTML and CSS in order to create the um, user interface for the applications. We have also a React Native. This one were created by Facebook. And React Native here uh, uses uh, almost the same concepts as uh, React for the uh, front end. It is not 
the same API, but it's the same uh, concept. So if you learn React right here, it's easier for you to, to learn React native for mobile applications. So for this section here, I have detailed for, um, uh, for, uh, for different um, sections we can uh, invest into. And here it is not um, mandatory to learn the, all of those for technologies, we can um, we can start here by the front end, then learn the back end, and here the most important actually is the back end. Then maybe I can say the second important one is the front end. The third one should be the database, because those three will be the most technologies you you will be using in your um, uh, projects. Mobile apps, we can add that and here we can choose either between web apps and uh, mobile apps uh, because it's a bit difficult to um, to learn the two and to master uh, both uh, technologies so I would rather choose one of uh, the two actually so this is to learn how to write code but in today's uh, requirements we want software engineers to be able um, not only to write code but also be able to uh, communicate and to use the best uh, practices for managing their uh, code. So here we are talking about um, source code management like Git. So after writing the uh, code right, using one of those technologies, we need to share this code with the other team members and we need to collaborate on that uh, source code. So we need to get the source code of our colleagues to re read it and, um, and add some other code into it. So here we'll be talking about software um, source code management like Git. So here I'll go and add another section for Git. So it's really really so important to learn how to uh, use uh, git what we mean here is just to use the basic commands for git like uh, the git add in order to add uh, files to the uh, source code management or use the git commit in order to create local uh, commits each time i have a new version of my uh, code or to use the uh, push in order to um, send those uh, local changes into the remote server that could be uh, in github or that could be in bitbucket or that could be in azure devops or any other um, uh, hosted uh, git server it's important also to go beyond those simple commands in order to use the uh, branch and merge so i'll add that here So that each developer will create, will start by creating his own branch. He will commit to his own branch until he finishes developing the uh, feature or the user story. And at the end, let's say here at the end of this sprint, he will go to merge his local uh, changes that he created in his local branch. He will uh, merge them into the master branch or the dev uh, branch or the release branch. So it's really important to learn how to uh, use uh, Git. And here, because we are um, we are uh, writing the software in uh, in a team, so we have colleagues. So we need to uh, find a way for uh, managing the time of each uh, colleague, of each developer, and to find a way on to how to collaborate and how to um, um, define the tasks and the features that should be implemented in the application. And here we need uh, a tool to make those uh, tasks easier. Here we'll be using the Scrum or Agile planning. So I'll add this section right here. So let's say here Agile or um, using uh, Scrum as an implementation for uh, Agile methodologies. And here we need to, to learn how or to learn what is a user story, 
how to implement it, what is a task. So basically user story could be divided into multiple uh, tasks. So we need to understand those uh, different things and we need also to um, get familiar with the notion of a sprint which is um, a period from uh, that goes from two weeks or six weeks in which we ca we will take different user stories and try to, to implement uh, those during that um, defined uh, period and then we need also to get the notion of uh, DSM, daily scrum meeting, which is uh, a daily uh, meeting in which each uh, software engineer will tell uh, how what he have done yesterday, what he will be working on today and tomorrow, um, what he will uh, do tomorrow and what are the problems he, uh, he encountered during developing the apps so that the uh, team lead or the other his other colleagues could help him so yes this is really important to learn in addition to this um it's not um it's not enough to learn how to write code but we need to make sure the code we write is uh, doesn't have bugs and doesn't have anomalies and it behaves as expected. For this, we need to write tests to test our code. And here we'll be talking about software testing. So each software engineer needs to uh, learn how to uh, create tests for his application in order to validate the source code he writes. So those tests could be either unit tests. And here we'll, we'll be talking about uh, GUnit, for example, if we use uh, Java, or they could be XUnit, uh, if we use uh, .NET, and there is lots of other uh, frameworks to uh, create those unit tests. So unit tests, tests is actually the uh, methods inside the uh, source code of my apps but that is good to validate at the um, method level but it's not enough to validate the end-to-end -end tests for example so for that maybe we need to add some other uh, type of tests like the integration tests or the UI tests and those uh, for the UI tests, for example, we can use Selenium to write those different UI tests. And Selenium here works for uh, different frameworks for uh, Java, for .NET, and for uh, JavaScript, and many more. So using those UI tests, we can write tests to, uh, that uh, go to open the uh, web app on the browser it will perf it will fill the uh, form it will click the submit button and it will check if the um, response we get is actually the um, uh, the expected result or not if it's not then the test will fail and that will tell us that we have we might have some anomalies or some bugs in the code that we write so this will enhance the quality of our application another important tool here is the use of containers. Today, more than any time before, we are talking about containers, and especially with the rise of the microservices architecture, lots of um, uh, architects are opting for to use uh, containers instead of using the uh, traditional uh, approaches. So here I would add that it is mandatory to learn how to um, use uh, containers. So I write here containers. And those containers, the leading tool today for containers is the Docker containers. But we might have also other um, um, other uh, container um, types like for example container D. or Creo or maybe we'll have some other uh, ones that will um, 
um, that will be available soon. And with containers here for uh, software engineers, all they need to learn about is how to create the uh, Docker file. The Docker file is the one that contains the different uh, instructions for how to uh, build the application and deploy it into a Docker container that contains the environment pre-installed inside that uh, container. For an ASP.NET Core application, for example, it will have the uh, runtime installed and the SDK for uh, .NET. So that way we can have at the end a container running our application. And this container could be accessible through the host uh, machine through using uh, port numbers uh, mapping. So after looking for or after learning one of those um, um, front-end, back-end, database, or mobile apps sections. It's important to look at those, uh, at one of those uh, technologies here, here in order to, uh, to be able to work within a team. We will evolve to something else. So here, for, for example, I'll, um, um, maybe we are interested in learning the cloud um, architecture. So here I'll add another section called cloud. And maybe you'll find yourself in the team, you'll find yourself the one um, responsible for uh, deploying the application into a cloud platform. So it's important to learn, uh, for example, uh, GCP, Google Cloud Platform, or AWS, or Azure, the Microsoft Cloud, and other cloud providers. And uh, each of those cloud providers have many, many um, um, services. And the main one actually is still the web app service, which is the um, Azure app service or the uh, Google app engine, and also the database services. Those are the most, uses, uh, the most used uh, services from within the uh, cloud platform. So it's important to start with those, then you can go to learn how to use, uh, for example, Kubernetes inside the cloud and how to use uh, different um, caching services or how to use the networking systems and so on. So start simply with the web and the database. After this, maybe we need or we want to learn more about uh, DevOps because here when we write the software, we test it, we want also to automate the deployment of this software. We don't want to make the deployment um, manually through using command lines and connecting to the uh, SSH, uh, to connecting to the uh, um, production server from our local machines because that might not work in most of the cases. So we want to automate the um, build and the deployment of the application. That's why we'll be interested in using DevOps. So here we need to learn how to create CI and CD pipelines. Those are the build and release uh, processes. So start simply with creating simple CI pipelines in order to uh, build the application, run unit tests, run some integration tests, and run some um, static analysis uh, uh, for your uh, source code to make sure your source code um, respects the best uh, practices. So this is for DevOps. And for DevOps, actually, you can use uh, different systems like Jenkins or Azure uh, DevOps, for example. And we have lots of other uh, systems available. Now, because software development became lots um, more complex than before, because uh, we need to write um, large applications and uh, we, we might have lots of uh, team members uh, writing the same application. So here we have invented this thing called microservices, where we'll divide the application into small pieces called microservices, and those small pieces which uh, will talk uh, to each other. So um, here with this model, 
we did have actually new challenges and new problems related to the communication between those two different uh, services. So here we started uh, talking about this thing called microservices, which is a new way of writing uh, distributed applications that uses SOA, um, software oriented architecture. So it's important here to learn how, what are microservices, how they work, how they interact with uh, each other, and how to make them resilient, high available, and so on. So the most important part here is the uh, communication. So here we might use the uh, async or synchronous um, um, uh, technologies. Here we'll be talking about uh, REST API for uh, synchronous or for the asynchronous, we might use the uh, queues so that we don't um, uh, we don't overload the uh, colored server. Other technologies are lots used with the microservices are also the secure RS command query responsibility segregation, which is part of event sourcing. So this is for microservices. Now the last part, which is important to learn, is the architecture of writing software. Here when we talk about the architecture, we mean the different architecture or um, technologies or choices. If I want to choose a database for my web app, then why I might use MySQL over SQL Server or the inverse, and why uh, I might want to um, use uh, Vue.js for my web app, and why I, I might uh, choose to write my app using microservices or using a monolithic uh, applications approach, which uh, or um, which is the best cloud provider for my web app. So all of those are the responsibility for the software architect. So for architecture here, we'll be discussing those different uh, choices we make in our uh, application um, um, source code. So I say here the software choices. Also, we might be talking about the best uh, patterns in terms of software patterns, but also the uh, application uh, patterns. So I hope this um, Lightboard session for today gives you a clear understanding of what, uh, what I need to learn as a software engineer to be uh, prepared for uh, today's and tomorrow's um, demanding teams in order to, to be able to uh, deliver from the first uh, day. So we have lots of technologies and uh, lots of uh, constraints here, but it's uh, really important to, uh, to be speci specialized in like um, one, two or three of those and to get uh, a clear understanding on the rest of those uh, technologies and fields. I hope you like it, this Lightboard session, and thank you.